Hi everyone, it's Tammy Mastroberti with Elevated Existence, and I have a special guest today for you guys. Joining me is psychic medium, Anthony Maraca. After years of struggling with addiction on his own, he had this sort of, after hitting rock bottom, had this spiritual awakening, and he started to see and hear things that were not of this world. As many of you know, I teach so much on signs and synchronicity, and synchronistically, all of these teachers started showing up out of nowhere, and he began to develop his own psychic and mediumship abilities. Today, he is an intuitive counselor and psychic medium. He does readings on the phone as well as in person in New York and New Jersey. He has done gallery events and more. And he's taken classes with a variety of teachers and was even handpicked and trained and is now certified by world-renowned psychic medium Lisa Williams. In fact, in 2014, he opened up for Lisa Williams when she was performing at the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, New Jersey. Anthony recently came on to our Eleva Elevated Existence membership community and did some readings for our members, and everyone thought he was amazing. And so I really wanted to interview him and bring him out to you guys and find out a little bit more about how maybe we can learn to develop our own mediumship abilities. So Anthony, welcome to our channel and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's, it's always an honor to, um, to be able to share my experience and um, knowledge of spirit. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Now I mentioned in the intro, you really developed your own abilities sort of later in life after hitting I think more than one rock bottom. So can you share what prompted you to br bring yourself to where you are today and to really go out and kind of develop something that maybe you didn't even realize was within you at the time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think again, you know, after hitting, you know, I, like you said, I hit rock bottom so many times. And, and, and for me, you know, it was this period of my life. You know, it's so interesting. I just got to go back and say like, you know, because so many books that I read around the subject, they talk about, you know, mediums talk about, you know, they saw spirit when they were little or they saw angels or they knew things. And I don't really remember a lot of my, my childhood, to be quite honest with you. You know, like my first conscious memory I can remember, I think is fifth grade, uh, um, believe it or not. And so I blacked out, I guess, a lot of my childhood for some reason that, you know, I had kind of had this emotional upbringing. So, but so reading these books always, uh, when, when I started to have these weird experiences, um, always made me believe I wasn't a medium because I didn't have these, you know, great experiences. Like you said it there, I, I developed late in life. And so it wasn't into my thirties, my last rock bottom, um, where, where I just really surrendered, you know, I really surrendered because I always believed that there was a purpose, uh, for my soul, uh, my spirit here. And, um, you know, that we didn't just come here randomly to, to, to do whatever. Um, I felt like we all have some sort of driving purpose. So, um, by surrendering to, to God and to really, um, really getting um, and, and, and being in prayer, that's when everything started happening to me. And I think what prompted it, again, is, is the synchronistic events, kind of like what you were just talking about, how the signs and synchronicities that we have, um, you know, through prayer. You know, through prayer, I wasn't meditating yet because I didn't know how to meditate. You know, I taught myself how to meditate. But through prayer, um, that's when I believe the synchronistic things, you know, like God started speaking back to me, the universe, uh, spirit, the divine. I think it's all one, you know, all, all kind of a one thing. So I just if you want to call it the divine. Uh, um, but uh, it, it was like something was mirroring back to me my own prayers, you know, of, uh, what, what, what should I be doing here? And that's what started to prompt me, you know, I guess. And, and so, you know, told, someone told me I should go for a reading and I did. And, and the next thing I know, this woman's calling me back and I'm thinking, you know, I have this really skeptical mind, you know, I, I thought mediums were skeptic. I mean, um, mediums weren't real. And I remember seeing John Edward on crossing over 17 years ago now. And I remember thinking that those people were paid actors, you know, I flipped the channel, I'm nah, it's paid actors. And I, and I continued on, you know, and, um, and I had my own experience where someone read for me, you know, in, in a, a, a kind of a gallery demonstration. And I was like, how could this person know this? So I, I became somewhat of a believer, but I still had this really skeptical mind. So now that this stuff's happening to me, made it even more skeptical to me, you know? And so, like I said, you know, when this lady called me back, um, I thought, what does this woman want? She wants more money. And I, don't, I didn't have money at the time because I was just, you know, trying to re- uh, um, get out of this real rock bottom here and I really didn't have much and so these these experiences kept happening and that's when I taught myself how to meditate and through meditation that's when I started to notice that something was happening 
and I started to hear like whispers almost, you know, um, I say whispers. I don't necessarily mean I heard it outside myself. I started to hear things internally and didn't know what was really happening. And it was more than one. It was, it started to become very common, you know, it was more than once for me. And so being someone that my rock bottom was getting sober. And so being someone that now is, uh, uh, sober again, and, uh, you know, it was kind of weird because I'm not going to go tell people I'm hearing voices because they put you in, in the mental institution kind of <laughs> hearing whispers, you know. So, um, you know, I started to, uh, you know, talk to one or two people about it. And like I said, this other woman that, that gave me the reading reached back out to me and said that I'd come up and I started I was able to talk to her, you know, I, uh, um, about it. And so looking back again, it's more synchronicity that. These people, you know, the, the, the universe, spirit, God, um, the divine, whatever we'll call it, the divine moving forward, um, really was, you know, allowed me or to have sent me people to help support me, you know, in, 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 in this journey, you know, so I, you know, because this woman said, I'm um, now after I talked to her the second time, you know, here's, you know, take my number, you're going to have questions, there's going to be weird things happening to you. And so, you know, like I said, I, I, things just, it wasn't like all at once, you know what I mean? But it was like over a course of, you know, maybe a couple months or a few weeks, you know, these random things started happening to me. I started getting psychic impressions about people. I would walk by people and I would know all this stuff about them. It was really weird, you know? And so I think it was then it was like, that was like the big thing. So I'm, what is happening? What is going on? And again, prayer started it all off, you know, surrender and prayer and praying for my truest purpose, you know, in life. Uh, why am I here? Why have you brought me here? Because again, my rock bottoms also, uh, I should have been, you know, uh, what I feel is to be dead, you know, um, through accidents, through um, being shot at by a police officer in, in my young, in my twenties, I was a, you know, very silly kid. Um, and uh, so, I didn't know why I was here, but through prayer and all this, and then meditation, you know, that's what really started to prompt me. And then I started having these weird, weird experiences. And I knew that there was something happening. I couldn't deny it anymore, especially the more I got deeper into meditation, it became like this newfound toy, you know, <laughs> uh, like, wow, what's going to happen today? You know what I mean? And, and, and some days nothing happened, you know what I mean? Some days nothing did happen. And, but some days I heard those things or I heard, you know, I, I would hear a name and then not just in the meditation, but, you know, uh, outside, uh, in, you know, things started to show up where, you know, I remember hearing a name, uh, go through my mind one day. I mean, I heard it clear as day and in meditation. And then, you know, the, the person I was dating at the time, um, you know, wherever we would go, it was weird the person would point out like, Oh, look at that truck over there. And it's got the, this name on it again. You know what I mean? It was like, it, they would start pointing it out and I knew it was like a guide, you know? Yeah. And so I started to really, you know, that prompted everything. And I really started to read a lot, you know, in the beginning after this rock bottom, as I was rebuilding my life, I couldn't afford TV, believe it or not. I couldn't afford cable. And so uh, for this first year, uh, um, and so I read, you know, I literally, that's all I did. I sat at home and read. Looking back now, it was great because I wouldn't have read. I was not a reader. I was not a reader before all this stuff. You know, I, you know, I would read a page or two and I would forget it. And I'd be like, what the heck did I just read and have to go back? But I was into these books. I, you know, I remember reading um, uh, Dr. Brian Weiss's uh, Many Lives, Many Masters. Someone oh, handed me that oh, book. I went to an astrologer. She handed me that book and said, no, you take this. And uh, I read it in 36 hours. I was yes. like, why you know so i started to read and just really became a sponge it's like no matter the knowledge i i just couldn't get enough knowledge you know what i mean and at the time when this was happening you know things like your magazine weren't around then you know what i mean right. like, uh, um or maybe it was i don't think they were around yet or i probably would have found it uh, mm -hmm. because i know that you're in new jersey i'm in new jersey and so, you know, I would go to the web and I would find some things, but mostly was the books and through my own experiences of meditation and continuing prayer and following these synchronicities, even how crazy as it may have sound following the, you know, the, the synchronicities. And I think that's what really prompted me to, to continue the journey. And it's not, listen, 
developing your stuff easy, your, your, your abilities. I call them abilities. Uh, um, I don't, I, just for some reason, the gift doesn't, I, it sounds like egotistical to me. Mm-hmm. And so I call it an ability. So we all have these abilities that we've been gifted in some way. Uh, um, and, you know, I, I think that through that process, again, is, you know, it's not easy, you know, and, and, and just whoever is, um, you know, developing right now, just no matter what, when every time you want to give up, just keep going because there's, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to, to just say, I'm done with this and try to, I mean, I did, I try, I tried to become a life coach. You know, I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to be a life coach and serve in that capacity. And it was like, God laughed and said, <laughs> no, 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 you know, <laughs> this is what you're going to do. And this is the way that you're going. And so, you know, and, and again, it wasn't, God didn't speak that to me. I seen it in the experiences that were being reflected back to me. I was in life coaching school and all of a sudden my money dried up and I was like, okay, what, what what's happening here? And then, you know, I, I kind of dropped out of life coaching school and then it was like back into development. So I was seeing what the universe and the divine was mirroring to me, but also having these, you know, these weird experiences. And I think yes. that's yeah. what prompted I always say like, because so many of us are worried that we're going to make a wrong choice or we're going to go on the wrong path. And in my experience and what I, and what you just explained there is we can, we can do whatever we want. We can make wrong turns, but if we're not on our purpose, if we're not doing what we're supposed to be, the universe is constantly going to reroute you till you go back. It's going to constantly take you back to your path. And so that's an exact, that's a perfect example of, of what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so, so speaking about kind of developing, I know, um, when we spoke, I had interviewed, like I said, we, and you did readings for our membership community. You had mentioned that a lot of well-known mediums have, had started really with, of course, meditation, but also tarot cards. And so is that, first of all, I had no idea. I didn't even realize that that was, I'd make that connection when you had said that, but is that something that you have worked with and how does using those types of cards or even Oracle cards or whatever kind of help you to open yourself up more? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's, it's interesting too. It's funny because like I have them wherever I go, I think I have a deck around me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So uh, it definitely helped me. And I think, you know, the, 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 the bottom line of it, how does it help you? It helps you develop your intuition. Okay. And even so, you know, even with all of your other, you know, the, your, your senses, your clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognance, clairvoyance and clairaudience and everything else, um, your etheric senses, um, you know, your intuition is also going to lie a big part of, I mean, just for your life, but also through the spirit too, you know, spirit communicates through in, in, intuition too as well. So I think that tarot cards, um, ultimately help strengthen your intuition, um, help strengthen uh, um, and help build upon that. If you've never, if you don't know how to use your intuition or if you don't know how to, um, you know, or if you're just, you know, trying to build on your intuition or learn, you know, deepen your intuition in some way and your intuitive connection there, I think that cards, Oracle cards, tarot cards, any kind of a tool will, will help you in to some degree, but tarot cards for me really helped. And, and like I said, in the, the original one was, you know, people don't realize that it's funny because when I say this to, you know, to other developing mediums and students that John Edwards started as a tarot card reader, you know, John Holland started as a tarot card reader. And so these big mediums, you know, uh, um, you know, if you look back at their story and uh, they started doing tarot card psychic readings and the dead started showing up in their room, right. you know? And so interesting, even uh, um, significantly with my path was, uh, you know, some person didn't show up in front of me and literally start to communicate with me. I started as, uh, um, you know, doing psychic readings and same thing. I had learned a little bit about tarot, you know, and, and read them intuitively. So mm-hmm. I would always suggest anyone to take a class nowadays. I mean, you, you know, we have the internet and online, so there's got to, you know, there's tons of, on, you don't even have to leave your home uh, um, anymore, but just to read them intuitively, like, uh, you know, sometimes a, 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 a real tarot card reader will know each, you know, position and all this other stuff, but there's a generalized meaning you can give it to. And then when you throw it down, you almost get this intuitive hit or intuitive sense. The other part of it about it is I think it helps develop your intuition for mediumship actually. And this is what, you know, again, the experience that I had was when I was doing readings, psychic readings, readings and I was throwing down maybe a Celtic cross for someone and you know and I'm going and all of a sudden because your conscious mind your conscious mind is busy focused doing something uh, um, all of a sudden underneath the subconscious uh, the spirit world um, can can kind of meld into you blend into you and start to give this information that then starts to come through your etheric senses so I'd be doing a reading 
And before you know it, I would just feel grandma or I'd hear grandma and I would stop. Um, um, this is weird, but your grandmother's in the spirit world. This is your <laughs> mom's mom. Is that true? And they'd be like, yeah, this is weird. And then I would just trust that information that was starting to come through, um, that it was coming from grandmother. So again, it's, I think one of the biggest, uh, um, it, 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 it is the biggest block for any type of uh, intuition, uh, spirit communication, whether that be through loved ones, whether that be from spirit guides, because um, we all have spirit guides, or some people connect with the angels, is the mind. The rational, conscious mind is the number one block. Yeah. And you will not, uh, um, you know, it, it, it will talk you out of thinking that this is all made up type of a thing. And so when you use a tool like Tarot Oracle or whatever else, you're focused in on that. And then, then other information could start kind of coming up, but it's also just going to help strengthen your, your intuition big time. Trust me, trust me, trust me. If you start to use them and work with them, it will help you. Yes. Fantastic. Now, what are, um, so you mentioned you were reading a ton of books and, and, um, and a lot of people I think who are on any type of spiritual or self-improvement path, love the self-help books and all the books that kind of the how to books. So are there any that you could recommend that really helped you when you were developing? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the, uh, you know what? Going back then and compared to now, what I know now, I'm going to give you my top three. What I, what I would tell anyone now okay. is um, Where Two Worlds Meet by Janet Mahavik. Um, it is probably, it's, it's short. It's simple. Um, it is straight to the point. It is one of the top three books that I, I recommend because she talks about the different clairs in there. She gives you specific exercises to strengthen them. She mm -hmm. also talks about concentration, meditation, and all that other good stuff um, in there. And then, um, you know, kind of, it just, it's just a great book, Where Two Worlds Meet by Janet Nahavik. My second one is Gordon Smith's um, Intuitive Study. Gordon Smith is right now, I think, profoundly probably one of the greatest mediums of our time. And, um, you know, he's from Scotland originally, but he's Hay House UK, but uh, intuitive studies, it's intuitive studies, a complete course in mediumship. But if you just put intuitive studies in, in, um, in Google, I'm sure that will pop up. That mm -hmm. book was amazing because, um, you know, for me in a sense where, you know, it, again, it's a complete course in mediumship, but he talks about the feeling aspect. And what I found in my work, uh, believe it or not, um, most people want to be clairvoyant. Most people want to see things or hear things. Um, and they, don't, they, they just discredit the feeling. And yeah. the clairsentience is so big. It's so huge in my work, I found. Um, and I can now trust all the feelings. So, you know, in the beginning for me, when I was doing all this meditating, and then, you know, when I learned about meditating on my spirit guides, and I wanted to figure out and build this relationship with my guides, um, you know, Gordon Smith talked about how powerful the mind is. And the mind will actually show you pictures and you'll believe it's clairvoyance, you know, and he talked about in this book, the feet, how to feel your guide out during meditation, mm -hmm. you know, get the, we call the, what he calls it. I call it now the calling card. How do you know when your guide is truly around you um, and trying to come in and give you the information? And so uh, um, I learned that from that book um, and the rest of the book is just great. My third one I would say is um, Stephen O'Brien who's a, a, um, a medium out of England, um, The Power of Your Spirit by Stephen O'Brien. Now, I will say with this book, you can't get this on Amazon. Uh, uh, so most people will go there or Barnes & Noble. You actually have to go to Stephen O'Brien's website. So if you put in Stephen O'Brien, The Power of Your Spirit um, in Google, it should, his website should come up um, fr from there. But that book in itself was... Uh, just eye awakening to me because in, in anything like in anything, and I think this is for anyone too, and anything we do, um, we have our own kind of, you know, BS detector uh, in, in our intuition, right. In, in our body. And so there's certain books out there nowadays. I hate to say it because there are so many people writing on the subject that are just, eh, something doesn't feel right there. So mm -hmm. when I read Stephen O'Brien's book, the power of your spirit, he talks about um, from his guides perspective. So there's kind of like some automatic writing, um, in it from his guide's view about mediums and it's touching, it's profound and it felt real, real to me. Unfortunately, there's, you know, everyone seems they're a channeler nowadays and, and I don't know if I believe everyone. Um, so always trust your own uh, intuition or your own, you know, BS detector, but his book was profound and it just talks about the behind the scenes on the other side of what's happening um, from his guide's perspective. And I thought it was wonderful. 
It also talks about psychic development in there too, as well with, with his book too. Okay. Fantastic. And do you have, I, I know you, you talked about the power of meditation and I always say, even, you know, even when we're just trying to kind of open up to the, the signs and signals that the universe is sending us, or just trying to get signs from our loved ones and feeling like they're not around kind of quieting things down, you know, prayer meditation helps, helps open up your awareness. Are there any other tips that you can offer to people, whether they are trying to truly develop their own abilities or whether they're trying to just kind of open up to connecting with their loved ones who have passed? Yeah. Tip, tips for people to developing. Yeah. I, I think, you know, and, and the number one thing is I would say is, is one is uh, start to develop uh, a relationship with spirit, you know, relationship with your guides too, as well. So I always start, I, you know, for me, it's journaling. I can only give you my experience. Um, I journal, you know, I don't journal to journal to, for the self like journal. I journal actually the spirit. I journal to my guides. I journal to loved ones. I literally write to them. Um, mm -hmm. in a, you know, I have notebooks. I have plenty of notebooks. These are all old journals actually. I probably should throw away. Um, mm -hmm. but then I keep them and I file them away in some way. Uh, but I journal. And so I just journal to them. And it's interesting because throughout the day, I'll, it's almost like I'll get answers. Sometimes I ask questions. Sometimes I need guidance. Sometimes, sometimes it's just, I'm journaling. I'm so thankful and grateful, you know, for the experiences that I had. So I think journaling is huge to, to spirit. Um, you know, clearly, again, like I said, meditation. Meditation is just huge. And I know we talked about that. The other thing is, I would say is, is believe it or not, is practice. You know, practicing. You know, asking a friend, uh, hey, can I, can I work with you? You know, sometimes a friend is hard because you know a little bit about them. And that's yeah. why I love when skeptics say, oh, well, they knew something. I actually would rather read I know nothing about the person because then I absolutely trust. So reading for family or friends, it actually throws you off in some way because you do know some things. So potentially asking a friend, uh, um, hey, can I work with you? Or asking a friend that, that has a friend that's open and just try to tune in and, and connect with them. And the other thing is too, is again, with, with, now we have online stuff. Um, you know, there's development circles everywhere, you know, yes. um, online. So um, if you are developing in some way, you can get into a beginner's online development circle. You can get it, you know, if you feel you're an intermediate, you know, there, there's, there's circles of all ranges. So try to get into a circle, um, you know, that used to be more in person. And if you are in person, go to meetup.com and, and, and put in that, you know what I mean? Psychic development or a circle and you'll find at one in your area. And if you're not in the area, because some people aren't. Like I said, there's a lot of online. I always like in person the best. Yeah. Um, but if you're in an area, I run an, uh, 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 for students that I have in a mentorship now. We, we were just on an a online circle last night. It, it works the same way. So mm -hmm. there's so many tools now at our fingertips to develop um, there. And those are the, the, the top tips um, that I would suggest. Yeah. And, and the first time I ever heard mediumship development circle was actually when I interviewed James Van Prague years ago. And he said that that's how he, when he was developing, he's like, he's like, I tell everybody, if you're going to go out there and read other people, get yourself into a development circle. So for people who maybe don't know what that is, what, can you just explain quickly kind of what is a mediumship or a psychic development circle? Yeah, it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of psychics or a bunch of mediums coming together uh, um, because there's probably there, I'm sure there's psychic uh, circles too as well and and just reading each other you know or bringing through you know we're pra you're practicing you're pra right. you're not just reading each other you're practicing you you know maybe there's eight maybe there's four people maybe there's five whatever you, you really don't want more than twelve um, but then one person goes and just bringing through what they're feeling, seeing, sensing, or hearing, and it's practice. And again, you got to, you know, in a circle, you want to find a circle that's really, uh, um, that you feel comfortable in too as well. Because again, you know, there's fear, there's nervousness. I get it. I've been through that whole thing. But, um, and it really, it's just people coming together, same time, kind of once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever it is, and they're, and they're practicing with each other and they're comfortable with all each other so they can mess up and, you know, make complete mistakes and sound like a crazy person. And, you know, we can laugh about it, you know, that type of thing. But it's, it's also important because there's, 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 there's that support and there's also that camaraderie in there too as well. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. So before, um, before we wrap this up, I, I always like to ask what, with all the readings that you've done and all the studying that you have done, what do you find that our loved ones who have passed on when you're bringing through messages, when you're bringing through evidence that they are around us, what do you find that they most want us to understand from their perspective on the other side? 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. I was just speaking with a colleague earlier um, about this. And, I, you know, the number one thing is I think – I don't care, you know, people say, well, even if they had issues with their family, their father, their whoever at that time, if they were mad or whatever the case may be, when they've crossed over, I, you know, it's my belief that, you know, we do go through a healing process. And so that, they, you know, our loved ones aren't the same person when they cross over. So from now, from their perspective, um, from, you know, in my readings, I always see that they apologize if, if it's needed, you know, there's always an apology there, but that apology isn't so much for them, you know, it is, but it's also for the living here because mm. spirit wants us to live our best life now. And so they're are very aware we're dealing with an intelligence there on the spirit side. So they're very aware of what we are holding on to energetically, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, if there's you know, shame, guilt, uh, remorse, whatever that stuff that we're holding on in our body, they're very aware of it because they could sense our energetic system because we are, we, that's what we are there. So they'll come through and actually bring up that information or apologize to some degree there or point that out in some way about their life because again, they want us to live our best life now. They want us to know that they're absolutely with us and watching us. I always say it to, to this way, it's, you know, it's gotta be frustrating in some sense if, I, if I'm a spirit person. I don't literally mean um, frustrating because I don't believe there's frustration of that feeling there. But, mm -hmm. you know, you are literally, uh, uh, think of it as a one-way mirror and, and they can literally see everything that's happening in our life. And, um, you know, they, they have this one uh, opportunity now to, to get it through to a medium. So I would think that, you know, what I always see is that they bring up, you know, things that are happening in our sitter's life to show them that they are absolutely still involved in their life. And I always say, speak to them, you know, speak to them like they're still here because they are, they are still here, but we, you know, unfortunately you can't see them. You can't feel them. Uh, well, maybe you could feel them, but uh, physically, the physical body and you can't right. hug them, but they always want us to live our best life period. They want us to know that, that, uh, um, they're, that they haven't died. Um, mm -hmm. And that they're with us and, and they're very aware and still a part of our journey and that we'll meet again. You'll meet again. But I always tell people, it's not anytime soon. But <laughs> you'll meet again uh, um, there. And, and they'll be there uh, um, welcoming them, welcoming them, welcoming them uh, uh, you know, from, from that side of life. Fantastic. Um, now, well, thank you so much. I want to ask, um, can you give people information about where they can find out more about you? Because I know you do do readings in person and on the phone. You have events. You do gallery events. So how can they find out more info about you or book a reading or whatever? Yeah, right on my website. You know, all my information is on my website. It's um, www.anthonymoraka.com. Um, a lot of people spell my last name wrong, so I'm going to spell it M-R-O-C-K-A. Um, and it's also uh, mediumanthony.com. You can, you can go to either one and it will point you to. But I have an online um, scheduler right there so they can see phone, you know, if you're in New Jersey or New York area and my events and all that other good stuff. Um, is, is right on there. And then also to following uh, on Facebook, you know, I, I'm, um, you know, I have a Facebook business page. Um, it's Anthony Maraca Psychic Meeting. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sort of help everybody. And, and there's so many people out there, I think that thank God are now opening up, you know, when my magazine first started, mediumship was still kind of like what or you know years ago when my mother passed away like people thought one or two people had this ability in the world right yeah. but now it's becoming so much more and people are becoming so much more open to it so I love putting this information out there and I just thank you so much for your time and and wish you well in all that you do thank you so much thanks for having me absolutely thank you and thank you to everyone who is watching and I will see you next time